In the previous video, I emphasized that organizations have choices when it comes to managing human resources, and we distinguish between a low-road approach and a high-road approach. Now, turning to the individual and away from the organization level, managers, too, have choices in how they can manage their staff and manage human resources. And this video provides a quick introduction to thinking about different managerial styles. Now, this low-road, high-road metaphor, however, is probably a poor one when thinking about individual managerial styles. Instead, you need to think about adopting different styles for different situations, not just choosing between, say, a high-road and a low-road. Now, there's a lot of different ways of characterizing different managerial leadership styles. I'm going to use a popular framework based on six different managerial styles. The six different managerial styles in this approach are coercive, authoritative, affiliative, democratic, pace setting, and coaching. Now I'm first going to quickly run through each of the six and then we'll revisit each of them to think about uh, good situations and poor situations, where uh, situations where these styles are a good fit, situations where these styles aren't as strong of a fit. Okay, first the coercive leader. A coercive leader um, is headstrong and authoritarian. This type of leader wants employees to comply and to obey. So in a sense, they say, do it this way, and motivate by threats. Now authoritative managers, not authoritarian, but authoritative managers are confident, competent, and have a strong vision. And so their key goal is to get employees to mobilize towards a vision. In a sense, they say, come with me, and motivate by persuasion and feedback. Now, in an affiliative style, people and relationships are the most important. And so these types of managers essentially want employees to be happy. And their catchphrase would be, people come first. And they motivate employees through building relationships with them and helping them build relationships with each other. A democratic style is a participative style. This leader builds trust, respect, and commitment through listening and employee participation. So in a sense, they say, what do you think? And motivate through inclusion. Now, pace setting managers, by contrast, are real go-getters. So they set high standards for themselves and expect their employees to follow their example. And so in a sense, they say, do as I do and do it now. And they motivate by setting high standards. Lastly, a coach sets out to develop employees. Um, and so. Their catchphrase is, try this, and they motivate opportunities through opportunities for long-term development and emphasize that over short-term results. Now, I really want to emphasize that there's no best managerial style. You need different styles or even different combinations of styles for different situations. Now, a coercive style, for example, is beneficial in a crisis. If the cost of failure, the cost of deviation is high, then uh, having a strong leadership style where people know exactly what they need to do um, can be beneficial. However, however, employees can become resentful of this. They become resentful of micromanaging. Um, and so in those types of situations, a coercive style is not very strong. Now, authoritative uh, style can be beneficial if you need quick results. And it can be beneficial if the manager um, has credibility and therefore is really confident and competent in his or her uh, work performance and sets a good role model, sets a good example. However, this can um, sometimes become arrogant or become authoritarian, in which case this becomes a negative rather than positive leadership style. This can be especially uh, the case if you're working with peers or even working with people more experienced than you. And they might mistake your authoritative style for an arrogant style. Now, affiliative approaches are beneficial in stressful situations where relationships are important, or it can be useful when trust is broken down and you need to rebuild trust by rebuilding relationships. However, um, in this approach that emphasizes relationships over performance per se, if employees need feedback and they need stronger supervision, then this is not a strong style. Also, the emphasis on uh, relationships over results can sometimes uh, have this workplace devolve into a situation where mediocrity is acceptable, and clearly that's not a good situation. A democratic style is beneficial when you need buy-in, 
Um, and it can work well when employees uh, want to participate, they want to share their ideas, they want to be included. However, think of a situation where employees don't want that. Um, they don't have that motivation or they don't have the expertise to contribute ideas. In that case, a democratic leadership style um, is not strongly suited. Um, also, there's the risk that a democratic style ends up with too many meetings, too many decisions. Um, and, and so if that's the case, then this isn't, not, this isn't necessarily a strong uh, management style. A pace setting style can be useful and beneficial when you need quick results because remember pace setting managers are setting a high example and expecting others to follow along. And if employees have the motivation and the skills to follow along, then this can also be a beneficial uh, positive managerial style. However, if employees need more direction, need more coordination, um, and not just follow my example, um, then this isn't necessarily a very strong or successful managerial style. Um, also, if employees become more concerned with trying to figure out what you want rather than figuring out their own good ways for delivering uh, effective job performance, then this can reduce morale and lower trust and therefore be a negative managerial style. Lastly, coaching can be beneficial when employees need their strengths developed and when they're motivated to develop those strengths. However, if employees don't have that interest um, or if the manager lacks the expertise to correctly diagnose employees' strengths and weaknesses, then this coaching style is not necessarily a very strong one. Um, this also isn't a very strong managerial style in a crisis. So again, I want to emphasize that there is no one best style for managing employees. Now, research indicates that the authoritative style is the single most effective managerial style, but even that one, as we've seen, isn't perfect for all situations. Rather, you need different styles, in fact, a different combination of styles for different situations. So work on mixing and matching different types of managerial strategies, managerial styles from your palette of options. And to do this, you need to understand yourself while also understanding others and managing relationships. This requires self-awareness as well as social awareness.